Hey guys, I'm Ryan Bossery from RyeWire and today I got my Tesla motor to finally spin. So I wanted to go through and show you guys exactly how I did it and what I'm looking at. So let me show you what's up. Okay, so the box that you're looking at is actually the box that the motor, the Tesla motor, was shipped to me in. So I said, you know what? No reason to reinvent the wheel. Let me just use this box and let me tweak it a bit and make it be my test jig to get this, the actual motor spinning. So let me show you what's going on here. This is the motor side of the Tesla drive unit and it's a three phase motor. So there's actually three poles here, that's AC. And what it does is it turns three poles into this inverter. The inverter comes out as, as um, DC in basically high voltage, okay? And then it goes to these contactors. So these contactors, we have a negative contactor and we have a positive contactor. The positive contactor has a big fuse in it, about 500 volts. And then we have a pre-charge relay, which is that little relay that's, that's next to it. And then the resistor, which is the white one with an ear disconnected. And I have another resistor that I was testing here. So I have two different resistors. You see some wire, cause I was just like kind of trying some different stuff to see. Um, reason for that pre-charge relay and resistor is so you're not slamming 400 volts straight to this motor. Uh, reason why you wouldn't want to do that is because it will actually that much power just switching on will will hurt or damage the motor. So the pre-charge basically ramps up the voltage so it's not hitting at a full like you know 350, 400 volts, etc. So here I have a couple battery cables. The battery cables go down to my packs. These packs are wired in series from positive to negative and they're all chained together and total at my relays up here, they're making about 365 volts. So right now that's actually live 365 volts. I gotta be very, very careful with that. Um, as you can see, we have a pedal here. This pedal is on this white cord right here and that's shielded cable and it goes down and it's just rigged up to down here, there's kind of a mess of wires and that's all plugged into my Tesla motor. There's also power to the motor and then there's also um, some can wiring that goes to this little controller right here. And that's basically the intermediary for all the can data um, and my way to basically quote unquote hack the uh, Tesla motor. This piece right here is our uh, P30 PDM from Morris Tech. It's a 30 channel PDM unit. There's no fuses or relays in that. Um, that's a unit that we do a lot of prototyping with and we have a many wiring harnesses available utilizing these units. We have a CAN based keypad. This is um, also directly connected to our PDM. And then I have another keypad over here, just toggle switches. Uh, this is for all my testing. So I have kind of hardwired stuff here and I have CAN based stuff here. I haven't done all my CAN based stuff. As you can see, my AEM display is pretty blank. There's nothing really on it yet. I haven't done much CAN work as of right now. Braille battery is a 12 volt battery. The 12 volt is essential because you need 12 volts to turn on our PDM, to turn on the controller, to turn on the motor to turn on and activate our high voltage relays. Um, so all these things, um, even, for the, even for the switches right here, you need 12 volts to turn on all the switches. So um, every system is going to have your high voltage batteries, you know, around 400 volts-ish on this pack setup, and then also your little 12 volt. And right here you could see our software for our PDM. The little green boxes are actually um, power outputs that are on and working right now. So some of those, you know, this is all programming that I've had to do to um, essentially run the entire vehicle. Um, and I'm not quite there yet, but a lot of the outputs are on and kind of working. Um, it's showing that my controller's on, it shows that my CAN bus is on, et cetera, et cetera. So let me show you guys kind of how this works. I'll run through this. We have a manual button for the brake on. We have regen, so that's like kind of some things that I'm gonna mess with later, uh, but I wanna have an override for it. Uh, creep, so that's when the car kind of creeps forward when you re re release the brake, essentially. It'll, it'll, it'll creep on you. This is drive, reverse, neutral, 
and then my main ignition switch that kind of turns on the PDM and all the 12 volt stuff. So what I would do right now is I would select, let's say we select drive for forward and I'm gonna release my brake and the motor is actually gonna start just creeping forward. It probably in real life, it would probably not even move to be honest. Um, this is just like, because there's really no drag on this motor at all, it's just, it's just spinning. So if I go over here and I hit my gas pedal, I'm gonna do that in a second and I'll show you guys that it will, clearly it has a lot of power there. I barely, barely touched it. So um, yeah, this is uh, working and I am super stoked on this whole thing. Uh, so glad to actually see my motor spin. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks for tuning in guys. Peace.